August release of Home Assistant or version 2022.8 is bringing a lot of changes. Today I will cover just 5 things, well actually 4 things and 1 bug fix that we see in this version of Home Assistant. Stick around and we'll start in a couple of seconds. This video has been recording on the beta version of Home Assistant and unfortunately I usually do that just day or two before the official release, but since I'm going on a vacation and by the time you are seeing this video I will definitely be enjoying the sea time, I had to do it a bit earlier. While this is a beta release, I think that most of the features will be included in the final release or final version of the 2022.8. But before we jump into what's new, let's look at one bug fix. It's authentication issue or getting yourself banned from your own home assistant without really doing anything. If you had a lot of cameras, generic cameras are similar, and you left your screen open on those cameras, went away, came back and refreshed the page, this refresh page call would initiate authentication error. If there are a lot of cameras on this page, like this one here, what would happen, the system would automatically say that you tried to authenticate with the wrong password or something similar, and you could get banned from your own system. Thanks to Frank, one of the changes that was introduced in the beta version of the 2022.8 is the fix for this version, so hopefully you will not get banned anymore from your own home assistant. Introducing Repairs, or how it was previously called, Resolution Center. Repairs is, I would call it like that, automatic log file scrubbing tool with diagnostics. What it can do, it can help you see the error, some of the errors can be resolved from that menu, and others will just notify you on how you should resolve that issue. This was one of the first functionalities that I tested when I installed 2022.8 on my recording system. But when I went to settings, system, repairs, I had no errors to repair. So this is why I also installed the beta version on my production system. And that's not something that I usually do. I usually keep all the beta testing on my recording setup. But unlike recording setup, my main setup did have some issues. If you have any issues, you should now see them on the main settings page. And also you should see here the counter. For example, I see here number two, which means I have one update and one repair. But let's go to repair center. In the repair center, I can see that Google Calendar YAML configuration is being removed. If we click on it, it will notify you that this stops working in the version 2022.9.0. Please address before upgrading. And you have information here. So this error or this issue cannot be resolved by itself. What I would need to do to repair this is go to the configuration file or configuration event file and repair this integration by removing it because it's been already merged or integrated or imported in my configuration. For each of those issues that are reported in the repair center, you can ignore them, but then it's up to you to remember that in the version, for example, next one, this will be an open issue and your system may not boot or may boot in a safe mode. If you want to see, you can click on three dots and click show ignored repairs. And by the way, if you are searching for the integration startup time, it's now located here. Here you can see how long each of the integrations it took for it to load up properly. This has been moved to repairs menu and in the future some other things may also move here, such as for example log files, because log files and these repairs really go well hand to hand together. But this next one update or addition to Home Assistant is really something awesome. And I'm going to talk about two things, this one first class Bluetooth support and HomeKit Bluetooth support, because they are kinda related. 
A lot of people were not happy last time the library has changed, but this time you will see why it's great to have improvements in Home Assistant even if you sometimes lose some of the functionality. Although actually you didn't lose anything, the owners of the HACS components just had to update their components and also some of the internal Home Assistant components. Bluetooth integration, and for that you will need either onboard Bluetooth or Bluetooth stick, and on the bottom of the Bluetooth integrations page, you will find a list of known working and unsupported adapters. Unsupported doesn't mean that it will not work, because I am using this one here, TP-Link UB400. But unfortunately, during testing, there were some issues with them, such as, for example, timing out, etc. That way, if you currently do not have Bluetooth inside your system, just get some of those known working sticks and you are good to go. Let me show you how I added it to my Synology virtual machine. In the virtual machine manager, I went to actions, edit, others. I already have the Sonoff, latest Sonoff Zigbee stick. Yes, I've already tested it and it's working also with Home Assistant, or at least Zigbee to MQTT. Press on a plus sign, select the Cambridge Silicon Radio, since this is the stick that I've just inserted in Synology, and press on OK. The stick will now be available for Home Assistant. If it doesn't automatically pop up, and it should really pop up, on this system it doesn't pop up because I just removed it and it didn't restart it, all you have to do is go to Integrations, press on plus sign, find Bluetooth, and click Submit. If we look at the options, we see that it has been found on HCI0, and after a couple of seconds, as you can see here, the devices, the Bluetooth devices, will start to show up. For example, this one is Xiaomi Smart Mosquito Repellent, and this Xiaomi device is something that I previously already recorded video on. But that's not the only device that will be found. In my case, that will be two Xiaomi Smart Mosquito Repellents, plus also SwitchBot Meter or SwitchBot Meter Plus, if you have that one ready. And for you to configure, just press on Configure, Submit, select the area, and Finish. It takes some time for all the data for this device to be populated. And that's how you add Bluetooth devices. A lot of effort has gone into this release of Home Assistant to add support for Bluetooth devices that people use. So if you had, for example, Mi Flower or Xiaomi Mi Flower sensor, that one should work also. But I mentioned that there is a HomeKit Bluetooth support. HomeKit doesn't require you to own any Apple devices, Apple Pods, Apple TV or similar, to use HomeKit protocol. If you want to use local protocol, HomeKit is local protocol, you can start using HomeKit Bluetooth that is now supported in Home Assistant. That way all the devices will once again talk locally. And if we look at the documentation, SwitchBot integration has been updated to support this, but also Sensor Push, Gov, Inkbird, Moat and Xiaomi BLE devices. As with Bluetooth, supported brands is something that will help a lot of users in the future. Well, starting today, but more in the future. What this is? For example, if you go to IKEA and buy a smart speaker, that smart speaker is something that is not done by IKEA. It is a rebranded device. Home Assistant will start building a database of known devices and linking them to the integration. So, for example, as in this case, Somify Tahoma is actually Overkiss integration. And new users will search for Somify Tahoma. And they will not know that they need to use Overkiss integration. All the known integrations or all known devices that are really attached to some already existing integration will be mapped to that integration. And even the documentation, at least I think in the future, will be automatically generated. The process for, in this case, Somify Tahoma and Overkiss will be the same, but the documentation will just replace this Overkiss with Somify Tahoma, and that way you will have integration documentation for each of the devices that Home Assistant currently is supporting. Which is also awesome is that Home Assistant itself will tell you if the device is supported, but the device is supported with some other integration. There are some other changes to Home Assistant, such as maps colors have been improved, 
And as always, there are other noteworthy changes, but I will not be going through them. We will also not be looking at the specific new integrations, although we did mention already Bluetooth, Go Bluetooth, Inkbird, Moat, and Xiaomi BLE, as these are parts of the Bluetooth improved integration. Before you go out and update your system, don't forget to look at the breaking changes. And there are not that many. The developers themselves are joking that this update should have least breaking changes so far. One that you should note is the change to material design icons. A lot of icons have been removed or renamed. So if you are missing an icon in your UI, just check this list and use the new name or proposed new icon. If we look from the bird perspective at all the changes in this Home Assistant, we see the part that Home Assistant is taking us. Plus, the official Home Assistant supported hardware program. We are looking at the future where you will have options to integrate device using various methods. For example, you could be using the cloud service, the local integration, that could be for example Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth integration and the user themselves will then select what is the optimal integration for them. If they want to avoid cloud, they could go for Wi-Fi or even Bluetooth. That way Home Assistant is making it easier for new users to integrate all the devices that are supported in their Home Assistant with ease. What is your favorite part of the August release of Home Assistant? For me, there are Two things if I have to select. First, of course, is the fix for this IP bans or authentication issue because I already have unfortunately cut myself off from my home assistant at least 10 times just this year. But the second and biggest difference is definitely this Bluetooth integration. I know, I've mentioned it dozens of times already in my videos and also streams that I don't prefer Bluetooth communication. But I think the direction where this is heading and maybe in the future ability to use ESP Home with ESP32 as extended Bluetooth device is something that will shift me in a new direction. And this is it for this Home Assistant with Bearded Thinker. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and that you did find it useful. And of course that you will love this new release of Home Assistant. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates and of course the streams. If you did like this video, don't forget to give me a like. And if you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always post it down in the comment section of the video. But of course, you can join the Discord server and ask your question there. And before I end up this video, I really would like to thank everybody who is supporting me and has become a YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you who watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.